Hi guys, um, today we're the, going to be making this little video. Uh, our Universal Plater Chrome Edition has gotten very popular and uh, we wanted to kind of just outline what comes with the kit, what you can expect uh, after you've opened it and laid everything out. We're going to show you what it comes with and uh, what we recommend doing as your first plating job. Uh, I've got Terry here with me and so uh, he can interject if there's any comments he wants to make but we're just gonna get right to it and uh, start out first of all uh, it comes with the universal plater chrome console it's got the uh, chrome stripping ability you can switch between chrome stripping and this, normal plating this is the mode switch it's the, called the mode switch power switch and uh, yep, as you see pro series chrome to gold edition okay now, we're going to just show, comes with three color-coded handles, as you see, red, blue, and yellow, plug into the red, blue, and yellow. We have the black common lead, which plugs into the black common port. We have a 10 amper power supply. We have the anodes, or bits, as we sometimes call them. Here, we have the 8 inch bit. These are our conversion bits because they convert from eighth inch to quarter inch. This so they plug gives, into the handles. Plugs into the, the combination handle on this end. And then these uh, larger application sleeves are uh, what go on to the bigger end. These little guys down here are our medium fine select plating tips. These are our ultra fine. So they're they do the same thing, just one's a little bit more fine than the other. That's for pen plating. Um, these are the zip ties. Don't forget the nickel. Okay. These are the zip ties that you zip tie on the cotton sleeves onto the bits with. This little guy here has a little N on it. That is your nickel conversion bit, and that is for use with Woods Nickel Strike or right nickel if you choose to do that. Um, so it comes, it comes with four beakers. These are all outlined on the uh, the checklist. Four beakers for the brush solutions, three that you use and one for an extra, and your fine select beaker for when you want to do fine select plating with rhodium or gold. We got our chemicals back here. Chrome stripping solution, which goes with the, the yellow here. Uh, this is your chrome stripping port. Uh, then you've got your surface activator, which goes here. Or if you were doing stainless steel, the Woods Nickel Strike would also go here instead. The This is your gold uh, port, or if you were doing another finish like nickel or something, you would put it here as, in, in this spot. Um, that's the 24K brush gold. It comes with a eight ounce bottle. That's a, a nice amount of gold. There are actually two different options. You can get it with an eight ounce and no pen gold, or you can get it with four ounces and you can get one ounce of pen gold. Yep. Good, good point. Same price. Good point. Um, we've got the uh, Universal Plater Chrome Edition User Guide. It's a very uh, uh, comprehensive, covers everything. How how to set the kit up, instructions from A to Z. It's a great guide. Uh, then here we have a little handy thing called the quick start guide. This is a one page paper. It walks you through after you've set the kit up, which we're gonna do here in a second. Um, it walks you through A to Z of plating this beautiful wrench here. So you'll have a gold wrench as your first practice piece. Uh, I strongly recommend everybody do that first. Yes, don't skip it, please. The, I mean, the reason we made this video and also include that is to save you trouble. And I promise you, doing this as your first item, it will end up getting you familiar with the kit, save you future problems, and it's just it's just a great first item to play. Even if you don't care about having a gold wrench, believe me, do it. You've got your safety data sheets here, one for each all solution. And uh, let's see, is there anything that we forgot to nope, mention? I think that's it. All right, and uh, I didn't really show it before, but this is just an extra beaker for you for like if you for your woods nickel strike or something. Um, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this bad boy up and then we're going to do the quick start guide for you. Okay, so what we're going to show you first is something that's a bit of a problem for some people and that's the first time you use these cotton sleeves, uh, they can have a difficult time absorbing the solution which causes it not to work. So I'm going to show you a little trick to speed up the absorption on the first time. Uh, what I'll do is I like to just put it on there to open the hole up. Um, and then dip it in the water or run it under a faucet either way. And then massage it. Really twist it around. You know, work it. Work it to get it in there. There's a sizing material that they put on fabric. Uh, that actually is what keeps this from absorbing well the first time. After you've done this once and you've used it and everything, you'll never need to do this again until you get out a, a new sleeve and then just go through this process. It saves you 20, 30 minutes. If you were to just dip this in your gold solution and let it sit there, it could take 30 minutes for it to fully absorb. Okay, so once you've done that, now you got the, the hole and everything, get some water down inside of there. You can even um, take it and, and put, if you're using gel, put a little bit of gel on your, your uh, anode here by dipping it in the jar and stuff it down in there. And then when, then in, when you put your zip tie on, uh, you should be ready to go. Okay, so now that we have soaked the sleeves uh, the way we just showed you, uh, we've gone ahead and set up the kit as per the instructions uh, shown on page 8 of the user guide. Um, just to quickly go over it, we've plugged the, the handles into the color uh, coordinated ports there. Uh, we've poured the solutions in. We've got chrome stripping solution here. We've got surface activator solution here. And we've got the 24K brush gel here. Um, we've got the common lead, which is coming and clipped to the handy little wrench we've included. The machine is not on yet, uh, but it is plugged in. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm actually going to... We're going to start on number seven of the user guide, which number one through seven uh, of the quick start guide, I'm sorry. The one through seven just kind of talks about setting it up and how to saturate your sleeves and fill the beakers and whatnot. So we're just going to start right on number seven and I'm going to talk uh, Terry here through plating this wrench. All right, so go ahead and turn the power switch on position so the red light is on. Okay, set the mode switch to chrome stripping mode. Okay, and then uh, adjust the output control knob to 7 volts. Clip the alligator clip attached to the black lead wire to the edge of the item being stripped. Make sure that the sleeve on the yellow handle is completely soaked with the stripping solution. Okay, oh, uh, we're ready to go. All right. Um, Using the yellow left handle and the chrome stripping solution, brush the item with the solution soaked sleeve using very light pressure, moving in a circular motion. The solution will become noticeably more yellow, and the color of the item will become slightly more tan as the chrome is removed. Continue to work over the, the entire area you want to plate, paying special attention to little corners and nooks. Spend between 10 to 30 seconds per square inch of area to completely remove the chrome. Now, I'm breaking from the guide a little bit here for a sec to tell you. What we're doing um, is we're going to show you how to do sections. The reason that's relevant is if you're doing like a wheel, you need to do it in sections. You can't just strip, and activate, and plate the whole wheel. So what Terry has done here is he's stripped three quarters of the wrench. As you can see, the tan line comes up there to the end of that, that top H. That's all nickel there that's got that tan color. Uh, that's, that's what indicates that the chrome is being stripped, okay? Now he's gonna strip to that point and now rinse. When you rinse, you're, 
you want to look for any water breaks. And we've covered this in our other video, uh, you know, refer to the plating uh, of the car emblem video. But, you know. There's a little one right there. See that? Yeah, there's a little right water there. break right so there. So what I'm going to do is hit it again. That indicates there's probably still a little chrome left, so he's going to go over it a little bit more. Because if you just continue with that, happening you're gonna end up getting some cloudiness or a smudge there's a lot of different ways to describe it poor adhesion it, you get poor adhesion you, you're gonna have to fix it so it's best to just stop now and ensure that you get See, now full it's wetting out the holes oh right there on the bottom is still doing a little bit okay we're gonna hit it again you know and certain pieces have thicker chrome and chrome can be thicker in certain areas. Also, there can be something on it that's maybe an oil or something, fingerprints that, that are keeping it from stripping too quickly. Or it's possible that there may be something about the nature of the underlying nickel where it, we'll have to see if this is that case. Oh, well, look, it finally did wet out good. Okay, so once you get that wetting out, so again, we've stripped three quarters of the wrench, not, not the whole thing, for the purpose of, of showing you sections. Now we're going to move on to the activation step. Um, set the mode to normal plating mode, and uh, the yellow light will now turn off. The yellow light up there in the corner indicates the chrome stripping. Adjust voltage to 7 volts, if it's not already there, about, yeah. using the center handle and the surface activator solution, activate the surface by brushing the entire item with the solution soaked sleeve using very light pressure. Move in a circular motion. Go over the entire surface twice, moving quickly. So on this one, you don't want to dwell on it too long. Just go over everywhere real quick two times. Activate all the way up to and into the chrome, so beyond where you have stripped. So all of the exposed nickel is activated. You need to make sure every bit of the exposed nickel is activated, but do it quickly, and then uh, rinse it off. Okay. Now, we're going to the gold plating now. So adjust the voltage to four volts. If you're a little off, four to four and a half, that's fine. Um, that's close right there. Pick up the far right handle with the gold solution and begin gold plating by brushing the item with the solution soak sleeve with very light pressure moving in a circular motion. As you can see, it should immediately begin turning gold. And if it's not, you, you can turn it up turn up the voltage a little bit. In fact, it cranks it up a little bit more. And uh, it will go on faster. You just got to be careful. If your voltage is too high and you start to see burning, you either don't have, your either your voltage is too high or you're not moving quickly enough. That's why you want to do circular motions. Okay, I'm going to go about halfway. And see, here's what we were talking about before. See how we stripped up to above the H and activated all the way up there. But we're only going to gold plate half of the wrench, like uh, probably up to the B in, in Pittsburgh there. Okay. And then that way you're positive that everywhere you're plating with gold has been stripped and activated. See, because if you push it right up to the edge of, of the uh, where you've stripped, you risk trying to put gold onto uh, an area that hasn't been properly prepared and then you get a line you get all sorts of issues So it's best to leave that buffer zone is what I like to call it uh, You have that buffer zone um, Keeping you from plating an area that's not prepared properly. Okay I put on what would be normally a good decorative coat like if that were an emblem on a car That's about how much I would put on Probably 10 to 20 millionths of an inch, which is a normal decorative plate. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other half of the wrench. Um, we're not gonna do the other side, because you'll get the point from doing this side. Um, but he, we're gonna show you how you blend these two halves together and show you that there's no line or anything if you do it correctly. Now, so we're gonna go through it again. You wanna set the kit back to chrome stripping mode. Voltage back to voltage back to seven volts. 
and go ahead and chrome strip. Now, the chrome stripper will not hurt the gold. It's not going to affect it whatsoever. And so, you want to chrome strip into the gold a little bit, once again, giving yourself no chance of having that area where there is still chrome. Because if, if, you, if you push it to the edge again, you'll get a line. You'll get a problem and you'll be able to see it. So yeah, overdo it, cross the line into the gold, and don't worry about it hurting it. Okay. I'm gonna take plenty of time to make sure I get down in the bottom of the letters. If it were an emblem, I'd wanna make sure I got in the little corners. You really can't go wrong stripping too long. Under stripping is a problem. Over stripping is, is okay. Yeah, and all the years I've done technical support, the single biggest problem with gold plating chrome items is failure to remove all the chrome and then trying to the gold plate. Okay, we're wetting out good. Looks good. And we'll switch the mode back to normal plating mode again. If you did, if you forgot to flip that switch and went on to activation, it actually just wouldn't work. We have a protection in there to where you can't do the reverse polarity of chrome stripping with the activator, so it just won't work. Um, so just, but just make sure you flip it to normal plating. Otherwise, you're going to be like, why is it not working? Luckily, it won't ruin it, which is what would happen if we didn't have that protection in there and you happened to try and activate with reverse polarity. So he's gone and activated, once again, all the way into the gold. The activator will not hurt the gold. Yeah, turn the voltage. Turn the voltage down to four and a half, five volts. Yeah. Anywhere between. Yeah, about like that. It'll play it anywhere between three and a half, five and a half, but really like four and a half to five is a sweet spot. While you're plating, you'll see it drops down to, to by about a volt. That's good. That's perfectly normal. And look at that. It just quickly turns gold. That's the reason a lot of people like gel, too, is it doesn't drip. Um, you know, you, you can control it better than the liquid. Some situations, a liquid better. Some situations, gel is better for doing cars and, and, and stuff like that. I'd say 99% of people use the gel. Now the way we did that, there'll be no line between the two different halves. And that's when people do grills on cars or long trim on cars, that's something that if you don't do it quite right, you can get a line. Or wheels, yeah. Or wheels, wheels or any, any big area. Sections. And when you're doing sections like on a big wheel, start small and work your way up. Don't start with a foot square area. Start with a, a four inch square area. Get it looking good, and then, uh, you know, then try a little bit bigger. And as you get better, you, you can move up and up. And So let's take a look at how it turned out. Look at that, looks beautiful. There's no drying or curing time needed. It's immediately ready to go. The gold does slightly change color over about the next 10 minutes. It, it, I don't not quite understand what that is. It's something with the cobalt or something. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's that's it. Um, it's ready to handle, ready to use. And uh, so thank you for watching. That's uh, that's about it for today, unless Terry's got something more that's to say. Just, nope, that's perfect. All right. Thanks, guys.